Two. Two. There we go. Ladies and gentlemen, so welcome to uh, our special uh, edition de uh, Xamarin uh, de la Programmation. Uh, what we're going to do is uh, simply just go through what is new those days with Xamarin and Xamarin Forms especially. Uh, because since April of 2016, back in April, probably April, uh, quite a lot of new tools and toys are popping up that makes uh, the development experience kind of cool. Uh, so I just want to make sure that anybody that is interested in Xamarin Forms, especially, knows about it because uh, things are looking around the corner. Um, just to let you know, quite a lot of well, a big chunk of those uh, cool stuff are actually still in alpha, beta, where they're getting there, but. Uh, um, it's probably just a good idea to still uh, start in play with it. Uh, anyways, my name is Benny Shamalidi. I'm a Xamarin evangelist and a, a serial entrepreneur uh, with a bit of agile side and a cucumberist, uh, which is a good thing to be doing too. Uh, just to, in order to find out uh, what level of technicality I'm going to employ today for my speech, uh, and who's not technical or not that much, or yes, one, excellent. Uh, who knows about Xamarin? Excellent, two, three, three people and a half. Excellent, great. So, uh, okay, I might just do a quick introduction about Xamarin in any case, so you can have a, um, yeah, an idea about what it is all about. So, um, Xamarin is a um, mobile application framework, uh, which is really a kind of wrapper around existing um, platforms, uh, such as iOS, Android, Mac. What it allows a developer to do is just to write one chunk of code and literally deploy it to various, um, to various platforms, such as iOS, Android, Macintosh, and uh, yeah, later on, probably something else. Um, that um, is also pretty cool because it leverages the power of C Sharp, which uh, went kind of open source, by the way. Uh, and uh, therefore, that's a pl platform that is quite tested, robust, not that much memory hungry, fast, uh, with some awesome libraries, uh, super active because every single release you've got some great new tools popping up. So that uh, makes it kind of cool. So, um, as I just explained, pretty much a typical Xamarin ap ap application. We'll have, uh, we'll have just like a shared C Sharp logic. So, that is going to be, uh, let's say you're developing an application in MVC. Sorry, I've got to speak to technical a little bit because otherwise I'm not going to make sense. Um, if you're de developing an MVC application, for instance, your uh, model and your controller are typically going to be uh, written in C Sharp. If you go the MVVM way, uh, your model and view model are going to be written in C-sharp, like, uh, let's say, a good old XAML uh, WPF application. Uh, so we won't just reuse all those bits. The, the little bit that we see uh, there is just the UI. Each platform will have a different API for the UI, the same way than, than Windows will have at the time Win32, let's say, uh, windowing um, framework, and Mac will have uh, Cocoa something. Um, Yes, the same. So uh, iOS has got its own API for uh, developing application, which is going to uh, produce some buttons and some scrollers and some whatever. Same for Android and same for uh, Windows. So uh, let's say that with this kind of uh, setup, you are going to maybe save like 60, 70 percent of your code, depending how crazy your UI uh, tends to be. Uh, to be better, to be, to be um, yeah, fair, I think the crazier the better. There's nothing more annoying than a really, really boring application. So make sure that your UI is very, very good. But that's another topic. So. <clears throat> Uh, there, there is quite a lot of questions about performance uh, when we're talking about Xamarin. Is it uh, going just to be a layer on top of everything and slow down uh, the whole malarkey? No, it doesn't because it's going to literally run as fast as a native application because it is a native application as demonstrated here. Ultimately, uh, we do some aid of time compilation uh, when we're deploying an IPA to an iPhone, so it runs as fast as uh, a normal uh, produce, uh, application produced through uh, Xcode. And uh, that's uh, pretty much the, the same set that we're just using the Dalvik just-in-time uh, compilation on Android. Exactly the same. 
no, uh, um, yeah, no speed loss at all. To be fair, I think it was like two or three or four or five years ago, some years ago, let's say, uh, somebody just um, decided to figure out what if, uh, instead of having the Dalvik machine on um, Android, we'll have just like a C-sharp virtual machine, and I think the uh, whole operating system, so Android, just went up the roof, like, I don't know, five times, ten times faster. It was kind of cool, but uh, it didn't get anywhere, because at the time, Google and Microsoft didn't share that much love, which might change in uh, the future or not. So, um, ah, yeah, that's a funny one as well. So, right, everything in C Sharp, C Sharp now runs on two plus six billion devices. I don't know if you just have Oracle pinging your computer every five seconds saying, hey, install the new version of Java. It runs on three billion devices. Uh, yeah, so that's probably, uh, it didn't move for the last five years maybe. Top of that, since Microsoft acquired Xamarin uh, and made it open source, so uh, as just to interest most of the community, uh, I'm pretty sure that this number might lose its comma pretty soon, uh, and especially with the advent of Internet of Things and how Microsoft and Azure are just making the IoT stuff very, very fun. But again, that's another topic, but that is going just to go right up. So uh, in order to develop Xamarin, you can technically do that with Notepad or any GNU uh, editor, if you feel like it. Or we uh, can uh, leverage Visual Studio, which is kind of good, especially with a good extension called ReSharper. Or Xamarin Studio, that has been since Evolve 2016, quite updated. Uh, the UI is nice. We've got a dark theme in order to be able to code in the dark like a vampire, which is pretty cool. Uh, yeah, uh, usually kind of slicker. Although, I must admit, I do have a preference for Visual Studio because, um, well, uh, ReSharper is just one of those, and Code Lens and a lot of other stuff. Um, but yes, uh, which both of them are free, by the way. Everything is free, uh, up to uh, with time and conditions. Uh, Xamarin Platform is included in Visual Studio. Yes, it is. Uh, Xamarin Platform is open source. Hooray! That's, that's very good. Um, um, I haven't started contributing myself to the code yet, but I contributed to a side project called XLab, which is a pretty cool project. I've got quite a lot of stuff to put in Xamarin platform, but I didn't write uh, to Miguel um, de Icaza directly, because apparently he wants just to chase the people that say in the past that they wanted to do a lot of stuff with Xamarin SDK when it was in a closed source, and that is going to chase them, uh, probably with a, I don't know, something, weapons, Mexican, a piñata, with a piñata. That's what he would do. So make Xamarin forms. So uh, build a native UI for iOS, Android, and Windows from a single shared uh, code base. Uh, so um, what it does is the following. So this is what I just went through a little bit earlier. Shared C shared logic, just like 60-70% uh, uh, view, uh, not the view map, your uh, uh, view model and uh, your um, uh, and your model or your um, uh, view and uh, controller. Uh, sorry. Uh, model and controller. And then you just have your UI layer for each platform. So write three times the same thing with just different API. Thanks to Xamarin Form and uh, good old Jason Smith, which is the one responsible for all this awesomeness. Uh, well, that's, well, I can't move there. Okay, I'm going to point from here. Um, yes, uh, now we end up having really one layer of user interface and just a little bit of something that is going to be specific code that will uh, fall into the category of custom renderers or just uh, native uh, control includes, um, yeah, mostly, mostly that. Uh, so the way it's done is actually with XAML. Uh, XAML, you, if you are into the Microsoft uh, kind of ecosystem, you might know it because this is how you used to do your Silverlight and, um, and the WPF um, application. So that's just like a Microsoft markup language for user interface that is pretty nice, decent, clean, and so forth. Uh, what those dude did uh, at Xamarin is just encapsulate all the three different platform controls into just like one, um, one, one tag, basically, one markup uh, element. So when you say text box that is behind the scene going to actually render uh, um, each of those platform uh, kind of elements and just present it to, um, to the controller. Uh, and uh, yes, but ultimately your UI will have only one element. So um, the thing uh, which is kind of cool is like unless, unless uh, stuff like uh, PhoneGap or at the time Accelerator, um, which were JavaScript based, but that was not a problem. But extending them and just getting to um, a level of details that is literally as good as a native API was kind of um, horrid. Here's a good thing. It's like very, very, very simple just to um, 
to, um, uh, to extend uh, through custom random, uh, renderers or native includes. So your level of detail examiner in form, uh, which somehow at the beginning had a reputation just to build some line of business applications, something kind of simple UI. Uh, I'm developing some examiner in form application that are fairly difficult uh, in terms of UI, and everything is pixel perfect with animation and some flashy stuff that just uh, rocks, and the performance is just uh, pretty, pretty good. Uh, so Xamarin Form is good for any project. It's readable, it's maintainable. Uh, you don't have this horrible, it's the death of the code behind, basically. Uh, code behind should have died just like uh, 10 years ago. Now that is just like uh, helping it a little. No to code behind, no to code behind. There we go. So, uh, what's included? Uh, shared UI code, yes, no, oh, yes, here we go. So this is just the stuff you, you are getting for free with Xamarin Form. So 40 plus uh, pages, layouts, and controls built from code behind or XAML. Forget the code behind stuff, it's private, it's, we should not. But uh, let's say just XAML. Um, and, and it's kind of uh, also all those things are extendable. This is literally what I just went through a little bit earlier, that just getting all the elements of the different platform and just like kind of hiding it into like one, one tag. So for one button, it's going to be one button tag that's going to uh, render a UI button on iOS, a whatever button on Android and, uh, and uh, a button button on Windows, let's say. Uh, Two-way data binding, if you're uh, into uh, MVVM, be it in, uh, well, by developing with Xamarin, you might uh, encounter it in frameworks like AngularJS. Even, yeah, well, a lot of uh, frameworks have that. That's uh, the ability to uh, get two elements, be it code or be it uh, UI elements and code, and make them talk to each uh, other simply by registering each other um, in, in, in such, uh, such a way. So for instance, you will end up having on the MVVM application a view model that will have, let's say, a uh, I don't know, a username, um, a username field, and then you'll have on your UI a username text box. When your text box will be just uh, um, modified by you entering your username, that will automatically bind to the uh, field which will be on the view model. And you can also have it the other way around. Whenever you modify your view model, that will automatically modify uh, the uh, user interface. So that is kind of cool navigation. That's a wrap-up around the navigation of those three dudes. Uh, an animation API, which is kind of not 100% there, you just have the basics, uh, but again, that is something that is encapsulatable uh, by your own doings, uh, again. As uh, on top of that, the libra library SDK is open source now, um, a lot of people are going just to add more to it. That's going to be beautiful. And a dependency service, so for the one using dependency injection, uh, which everyone who, is doing, who does a bit of programming should do, break. Resume. Um, everybody uh, who does a little bit of programming, programming should do. Dependency injection service, uh, I'm not going to uh, say what it does, but anyways, in Xamarin forms, it is implemented on the shape of an attribute um, in the net that you will just add to your class and then have access to a service that you, um, that's just uh, technically your service registration. It is good and convenient uh, if you want to do some simple stuff. There is some drawback and shortfalls that I can see uh, on my day-to-day -day development. For instance, let's say that you have some bits of your shared C-shared logic that doesn't only run on your phone, but let's say on your website, on, on API, somewhere else, because you want to share more code than there is. Let's say that this code is not only shared by your um, mobile apps, but also by your server, by whatever you want. If you use uh, registration uh, from Xamarin um, as an attributed stuff that only Xamarin form will understand, uh, that is just going to create some problem uh, somewhere else. Also, uh, the, uh, you cannot really register dependency, generic dependencies, and one too many, let, let, let's say like um, one interface to multiple implementation. Um, that's also not possible. And the messaging center, uh, obviously, which is just uh, but, um, in order to be able, uh, if you know the messenger pattern, that's the same thing. That will allow you just to uh, observe, subscribe, and just uh, uh, kind of, uh, shortcut your uh, application uh, dependencies in order just to do something funky of your liking. 
So example of uh, layout pages, uh, I'm not going to go through that, but yes, that's pretty much um, going to satisfy most of the customers. You can probably do your own if you feel like it. Controls are just the usual one, arranging from an entry, which is just like a text box, to a view cell, which is just like a, uh, a list cell, a slider, search bar, progress bar. That is just, that means that this image cell is going to be, with one tag image cell, is going just to be uh, literally rendering one iOS, one Android, one uh, Windows um, um, image. <coughs> um, yeah, uh, the usual uh, producers of controls uh, for any uh, website uh, framework uh, just uh, started to jump into it. So you probably recognize Telerik and Component on One, Fragi Six as well. Well, those two. Two. Uh, that means that uh, if you are, it's mostly really charts and like a, a kind of yeah, a, a hard piece of UI, I suppose. Um, so, uh, well, that's just like a simple example. Um, again, it's a bit blurry from here, I suppose it's blurry from, uh, from your side. But what it does is just uh, literally what I was saying here. We've got to come uh, like this is a tabbed, a tabbed uh, view. We cannot see the tab, so let's imagine there is a tab here and here which says uh, what profile and settings uh, just by simply creating a tab page um, as on your example, as demonstrated there and created uh, some content pages under the children of the tab page, let's say profile and settings, and then stuff some kind of uh, an entry is a text box, entry is in the text box, and a button that is going just to literally render that for each platform, uh, iOS, Android, and uh, Windows. Um, and that is the same bending that we were talking about here. So that is going to bind to your username on your view model, pass one on the view model, and that is going to bind to a command. So uh, um, if you are into MVVM again, you uh, left the event-driven uh, programming nonsense and just got to your senses, actually, it's a funny sentence, uh, to <laughs> actually bind um, a command to your UI, uh, which is testable, it's got a lot of, uh, lot of goodies. And, um, there we go. So that was the uh, Xamarin form uh, 1.0, I suppose. Cheers to the camera. Right. <coughs> let's continue. Now let's go to Xamarin form 2.0. Xaml compilation, uh, which I'll get in detail later. Uh, Android app compat, which is um, cool, but that's about it. Uh, yeah, list you catching strategy and pan gesture recognizer. And uh, yeah, uh, UWP preview. So compilation. So um, XAML uh, markup um, is uh, was just like kind of performance was all right, but that was uh, that could have been improved because obviously you just have a parser that is going to be looking at runtime at this series of tags and just like uh, swap it with the native control of the platform. So they did something cool, uh, which is just enabling the compilation, which is going to do that at compile time. So at compile time, let's just get that all packaged nicely. No interpreter or just parser will just uh, look at that, which just definitely improved um, the, uh, the performance, as I say here. Um, yeah, so for what? Well, doesn't matter. That's the option it is. And uh, at present, it's just like literally a tag you stuff on your uh, XAML page that is going to tell um, uh, yeah, the, the compiler to compile. I've compared uh, that um, something on Android. It's uh, mostly about having some uh, kind of views to uh, share your stuff with Twitter, Facebook, email, and uh, also it's got something to do with action view. If you're into Android development, you know what it is. Now it's included in several forms. If you don't know what it is, then uh, maybe look into it or start doing some uh, Android development. Uh, yeah, la la la. So matter, yeah, so that's, uh, yeah, so list uh, view caching strategy. So that's kind of important. Uh, if you are looking at performance, um, you've got a list. Uh, a list will have some images, some text, some whatever, a data source. Uh, so uh, you've got two ways to handle uh, the way this list is populated. I either you reuse a cell, so a cell uh, while uh, scrolling is going to get out of the view. Therefore, that is going just to be freed and will be just like uh, um, available to be uh, reallocated with some content later on which is kind of uh, freeing some memory, but that need that you will need to, uh, if you are going to re-render, let's say, scroll up the same cell, uh, well, we'll have to fetch it again. Um, so retain is just not that. Retain is just like, oh, this cell is going to be this one forever until we just want to explicitly overwrite it. Recycle is just like, okay, let's reuse as we go. It does improve the performance. At least you can be kind of uh, <coughs> tough. Um, 
Windows support, yes. Uh, so yeah, we're getting in um, uh, UWP, which is kind of cool. Uh, Silverlight 8 is going to be deprecated. That's uh, good because it's a bit old. So goodbye, Silverlight. So now we've got uh, Xamarin Form 2.1. So we've got control templates on it, a data template selector, effects, and uh, well, that is like a bit technical. So uh, when you are creating some custom renderers, which is literally what already exists. So when you see a text box in Xamarin Forms, in the background, that's going to be a text box, native text box on iOS, on Android, and on Windows. Um, and um, you want to expose some properties uh, to, um, to this tag, uh, to, to this markup element, uh, to uh, let's say like a text box. Um, and the way you do it is just like properties of your uh, XML, really. Uh, you just create those bindable properties, and that uh, use generics. Generics yeah, are cool in most cases. Here on the UI level, that was just um, causing the uh, well, the, the, the process to, to uh, well, not be that uh, 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 fast, let's say. Uh, so uh, instead of just using a generic declarator, you just uh, do that uh, statically with type of and, and so on. So let's get into the control template. So a control template is literally the ability to aggregate, uh, aggregate multiple Xamarin Forms elements in a template. So uh, let's say I want to have, in this case, a header, a footer. And here, that is just going to be uh, where my content is going to be. So that is encapsulated in this kind of markup. Uh, we just say somewhere, uh, uh, ta -ta -ta resource, resource, uh, here we go. control template. It's got a name, which is la la la. And it's got like uh, a label on the top, a label at the bottom. And here's got the content presenter, which is this bit. So uh, that allows you here to simply um, on the content view, which is just like a, a page, basically, uh, to uh, use this control template here with a template that we just created. And that will automatically, oh, yes, a pointer. And I like doing that. It's kind of, it's low fi it's, it's nice, it's nice, it's good. To some extent. Uh, all right, all right. Thank you. Wow, I can walk. Excellent. Woohoo! Um, yes, so that um, control. That's your content that is here. So again, uh, this guy will have a template called TL template for whatever reason. Uh, and inside uh, of, your, of your content, you can add, because uh, this guy added a label and a button that you can see here, 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 here. So that allows you just to, again, reuse a set of control. That's a, a nice shortcut. Uh, data templates is something uh, similar, but for, for, for lists. To some extent, so we just have a, a, a data source that's going to be um, having a repeatable uh, objects uh, that you will bind to a list, let's say, uh, that allows you just to uh, theme it, really. Um, yeah. Um, yes, so FX is uh, something that uh, I think my friend Udara went through last time. Uh, an FX is a bit like a um, custom renderer, but it's just like lighter. So you can only just change a couple of property. I think we've got two override on it. So you cannot, uh, yeah, no method or events, no replacing of the control, that's correct. So you just have an unattached and detached, which is just pretty much set up the stuff and then clean up. Uh, you can attach that to, um, to any kind of control and that will just you, be able to modify the color or something, something like that, just like some UI properties. So nothing too funky. Xamarin 2.2, so nothing much was happening there. Uh, maintenance release. Yeah, margins are cool. Uh, that um, allows you just to add padding and margin to your, uh, to, to your XAML. Uh, I think that's the interesting bit. Uh, yeah, Windows map. Uh, to this core view support, yes, uh, that was something that was not there before. I think we've got the details later on in the carousel view. Um, so uh, the um, carousel view, that's, um, uh, as it says, just like allows you to have uh, a series of images or content that you can just like uh, swap uh, left and right in order just to change the content to the scroll view support. That is a simple scroll view where the content didn't fit into, uh, into one view. So some is hidden, let's say, um, at the bottom of, um, of your app. Scrolling up will show it. Uh, margin, again, it's just like self-explanatory. So now, uh, the pretty cool stuff that are coming up our way, uh, I believe, that are just uh, direct from Evolve, I think that most of them are in alpha at present. So you had, there is a feature that a lot of XAML developers wanted for a long time, which is a previewer. A previewer. So beforehand, 
XAML didn't really have a way just to render before uh, uh, running the application, really. So you are trying to, well, to, to do your best and say, oh, but you didn't know what an application was going to look like until you run the stuff. Uh, that is uh, no longer the case, as I can demonstrate here. So we've got, uh, can we, yes, we can see that. Excellent. So uh, let me just, it is just a project loaded on Xamarin Studio. I'm going to set that at um, a project. So let's, um, I'm just going to build this project quickly. It's just simply to demonstrate that we can actually see uh, XAML rendered um, prior. Okay, one build error, I suppose. No, really? Mm. I don't believe you. Let's. Uh, Where's my preview? Ah, I'm not on the right place. Here we go. Preview. iOS. Here we go. So that is a bit of XAML. Oh, sorry. Got a bit of XAML here. Uh, yes. Let's just remove that as well. Right. So um, let's let's uh, do a quick example here. Uh, uh, loading speakers. Look. Let's uh, search for speakers. Okay, here we go. Text speakers. We can, ah, come back. Yes, here we go. So we can see we've got a label here with some text here. Loading speakers. So if I just change that with uh, to uh, Z, here we go. Um, or XAML is updated in real time without needing any compilation. Can change the color to uh, something uh, more funky, let's say. Uh, so the color background. Uh, color of this label is purple. Let's put it to uh, white. Bim, done. So, uh, and you can just add some text box. So, I want to add another label. Let's just do some nice copy and paste because I'm slightly lazy. Up, bim. Uh, two. Excellent. So, uh, it works also for Android, but that allows you to see really in real time uh, what um, the UI that you are going to uh, do looks like. And it supports also some funky features, such as uh, the binding, uh, the data binding uh, is actually live as well. So, let's, get that, uh, let's say that you've got an API that is just uh, um, going to service some JSON uh, in the cloud. You just set the, uh, the data binding of, uh, yeah, of uh, whatever is your uh, data source to uh, look at uh, that uh, source, and you'll be able just to see that in real time, which is kind of cool. Um, I like it very much. So that's uh, the XAML Previewer. Uh, URL nav navigation, so that's uh, deep uh, navigation. What that means is uh, the ability to uh, click on a URL um, on your phone, and that is going to open the relevant app um, that, uh, that will understand it. So um, on this example, for instance, there is an app called um, uh, Evolve, which was just as a program app, a companion app for Xamarin um, Evolve that uh, was in April 2016. Um, this URL will have just a little bit of malarkey embedded on it. By clicking on it, it will say, okay, I need to open the application that is uh, the Xamarin Evolve, and that will go straight to the page um, within the application. So that's kind of cool. Um, ah, yes, we've got something else called data pages. That will probably just like uh, be very, very liked by enterprises that allows you to literally make an app without coding. So, um, yeah, ultimately, you'll have a data source, uh, some JSON, uh, most of the time, I suppose, um, and you just feed that to your application, and this application will generate the master detail page. We're talking about really when there is a master to detail kind of uh, page um, um, yeah, uh, setup uh, like, um, like this, for instance. I'm just going to demonstrate that quickly as well. Um, uh, well, we got that probably around here. Right. Actually, I, can, I could, uh, what are we doing with time? Eh, a little bit of time. Uh, I could attempt to do that like from scratch to see how long it, it takes, maybe five minutes. Uh, if it takes too long, uh, just tell me that you're really bored and uh, we can take it from there. Uh, right, so I'm going to have a little bit of this first. Cheers, camera. Right, um, okay, so that's actually the project that is already done, but let's ignore it, let's be crazy. Because demos that you do in real time in, in conferences like that never work anyway. So uh, I look a bit silly. But that's fine. I don't mind looking silly. 
I can look silly even without calling like this. <laughs> See? Silly. <laughs> silly, right? Yeah. yeah. Exactly. You can do it. <laughs> this thing, this thing. <laughs> Strong. Okay. Jasmine Green Tea. Yeah. yeah. Right. All right. So uh, let's do a new project. And uh, that's going to be a blank XAML app. Yes, that is correct. Uh, let's call it uh, whatever. Uh, very good. OK. That is just XAML inform app. Simple and efficient. Let me just get something there. Up. Nice sheet sheet. Might have like two seconds to talk about the weather if you want. Also Brexit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, any British nationals in the audience? <coughs> Yay! Good. You want to know what I think about it? <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm just going to make a diversion by eating this thing. Mm. Mm, yes, doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. mm. Excellent. So, yeah, you can see probably. So, Examiner Inform project, as we said a bit earlier, uh, well, or we didn't maybe. Um, we'll have like a, a shared code project, which is a PCL, uh, portable class libraries, which is a kind of subset of the Dunn framework. Uh, Android app, iOS app, I'm going to switch to iOS because it's, uh, well, it's more fun, somehow. Well, it's just like, a, well, no, the reason is not because it's more fun. The reason is because I'm using a lot of alpha stuff. Android, uh, sorry, um, iOS tend to be slightly more stable than the Android stuff because Android's got more dependencies and the pattern you get hell can happen very easily. So that will probably guarantee that the thing will not work. So for the sake of sake, let's do it this way. Right. So, uh, we've got absolutely nothing here at present. Excellent. First thing we need to do is just to get a couple of NuGet packages, um, which uh, are um, lit uh, well, what we need in order to build those data pages. That's just some clever logic that somebody just decided to design. So, as we do who references, NuGet packages. Uh, um, yes, no, we don't need Xamarin forms. We've got that already. What we need is Xamarin.forms. Uh, dot what? Pages. Pages, yes. Pages, come on, you can do it. Examaron, yeah. Good catch. Uh, you you got it? Uh, if I had some goodies, I will give you. Um, you just want a Jasmine Green Tea from Microsoft Fridge there. A limited supply. Very nice. So I'm going to get that. Uh, as you can see, it's only in pre release. If I just untick this box, won't get it. All right. Awkward silence. Mm, it is. Is this edible? No, probably not. Right, done. Still installing. Yeah, okay. Ah, yes. Okay, I just forgot something. I'm not connected to the internet. Uh, ah, yes. No, I am, I, I am connected to the internet. Let's. Uh, well, that seems to be finding it. Let's try that. No, the site cannot be in ah, yeah, good, yes. Thank you. So now uh, we need something else called uh, uh, theme, theme, theme is good. Yes, a base, so a theme is just, uh, yeah, literally what, what, what it is, it just allows you with um, some kind of CSS. Um, oh, there we go to uh, to theme your application, or at least um, a view. Yeah. OK. Then uh, I am going to do, unfortunately, the same thing there. That's super annoying, but that's the way it is. So um, if you've got to check your email or, um, I don't know, do something else, go for it. It's going to take an extra two minutes and a half. Um, dot. Yep, but uh, when you do something from scratch, you've got to do it from scratch, otherwise, you know, that's cheating a bit. Why? No. 
hello. No package is found. I cannot believe it. A pages. Aha. There we go. All right, we're getting that as well. We need to do that on yet another project. Then after it should be quite fast. Um, I could have, yeah, no, no good. And actually, it's going to take like, no, it's 7.50 already. We've got two more speakers. I'm going just to uh, not do that. Uh, let's go back to the other one. Um, le let's pretend it just all um, works fine. I've got all my packages done already. So uh, sequentially, I'm going to show you what you need to modify before running. Um, first of all, you have a look at your um, app, which is just like, a, like the hook on, the, on running the uh, Xamarin Forms application. Uh, what you do, you just add um, like a pull, uh, uh, like a theme, which is pretty, uh, sorry, reference to a theme, which is what we are going to use in order to be able to theme this data page. And uh, then we just have a resource dictionary, uh, which is something cool uh, that you'll have to look into it. Anyway, just to uh, make sure that it's available to our application to use. So that is just going to be those dark themes again. Then what do we need to do? Uh, we need to set the main, main page as a page that we're going to create. Uh, so I don't have the time just to go deep in details, unfortunately, this time. But that's just to show you that little code uh, is uh, involved more than anything else. So trust me, I know what I'm doing. Uh, then uh, you, here we go, you just need to create a uh, page, which is going to be the one that we're going to display. Uh, what it does, it uses uh, uh, list data page data, data source, which is literally the meat of the data pages. Again, it's going to get some piece of JSON and magically going to show, uh, display that into a master, um, which is a list to detail um, page without you doing any coding. So here, what we are saying, just go to this data source uh, and just uh, let's use that for um, for all data. So if I go to this data source, I think I've got it somewhere there. I believe so. Um, yep, BIM. Here we go. That is just like some event kind of uh, JSON. Just got like some image, some room, some biographer, some some, some stuff like that. That's it. Um, here it's kind of important. The style class is literally what is going to produce a mapping between your JSON and uh, and your 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 style. Um, so uh, it's something that we can modify. I will not go through that, but it's just something very easy. Um, then, uh, yes, you just need to uh, subclass the list data page, which is just a type, again, of your XAML view. And, uh, and what? And that's about it, I believe. That's all you need to do. Yes. Um, on your iOS uh, code, do absolutely nothing at all, I believe. Uh, yep, yeah, that's it. Cool. OK, we're going to run that. So literally, that is literally the whole code. No more code is needed. And now this is why I'm going to run it. And it's not going to work, because that's the way demos work. What? No, we don't need licenses anymore, Xamarin. Uh, oh, yes, I just put it somewhere else. Yeah, maybe. Is that running? What did it do? View has been canceled. Absolutely not. I refuse. There you go. Now it's building. So basically, the longest bit would have been just to simply get those NuGet packages. Uh, then once you've got them, literally, we're talking about like a 15 lines of, of XAML, maybe. And suddenly, all right, I need to make that a bit smaller, maybe. Um, Windows uh, zoom scale, 50%. Yes. That's going to work. That's going to work. That's going to work. Come on. Just do it. And it doesn't work. Ah, yes, it works. <laughs> Here we go. So um, that is just this JSON that has been got. Again, with just this couple of lines of code saying simply, get this JSON and just do something funky with it. Apply a theme that is, uh, the theme are just pre-built, are just like uh, NuGet packages. So the idea is just more and more people are going to make more and more themes that will allow you to have just some application that looks cool without having to do anything. So, but uh, again, it's a master, it's a list and detail page. So if I click on this guy, it's going to show the details. Beautiful, without having to do anything. Isn't it cool? And it doesn't look too crummy either. Um, so I can see just like for mocking up an application super quickly, literally even a non-coder can do it. Uh, non-coder miss there. Yes, you can do it. You see? Awesome. This one is for you. 
Right, um, so that was uh, the demonstration <coughs> of that thing. Let's go back to um, where we were. Have I got... Uh, That's it. Uh, themes, la, la, la. Uh, yes, okay. Um, F5. Ah, oh, well, whatever. I, I think we're just like getting to the end anyways. Um, da, 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 da. 2.1. FX went through that, FX2, da 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 da. URL navigation, data pages, that's what I just demonstrated. Themes, they have been demonstrated indirectly with data pages, which just allows you just to get, again, it's just like a CSS theme, but um, nicely implemented. So far, you could just do some kind of theming by adding some resources to your main uh, XAML uh, file, saying that, okay, let's call, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, blue detail is going to be this type of blue, and just like CSS, you can just use this class back into your code. But that is just like a bit more thorough. Native embedding, I mentioned it a bit earlier, so that allows you to embed literally some native code in uh, Xamarin forms uh, by using some preprocessor directives. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, that's about it. Ah, no, aha, just like quickly, one second quickly to show you something very, very cool that Xamarin just did. Um, let me find that somewhere. Uh, it should be here. Um, workbook. Yes, so I don't know if you uh, are uh, familiar with uh, like the uh, uh, C-sharp kind of, uh, how do you call that, not command line, that allows you just to literally uh, evaluate evaluator, evaluate some C-sharp as you type without having to run it. So here, that is something kind of cool. I am just going to uh, create a workbook on iOS. Bam! For the same reason that um, the uh, Android one may be a hit and miss on this uh, level of alpha. And uh, what it will allow me to do, it will allow me just to uh, do stuff on the phone, just like uh, as, as I go without having to compile anything. It's just like literally like a scrapbook. Say, okay, uh, just um, show me an alert, add a label, uh, do this, do that. Here we go. So that's a guy. So have we got a, okay, let me do that a bit smaller. Uh, the simulator hardware, uh, where is it already? Window, here we go, scale. Scale, 50%, my friend. There we go. So we can do something along the line as, um, come back here, there. Okay, let's do something like this. So I do um, var alert, alert equal uh, new UI alert view. That's what an alert is in um, iOS. And it just takes a couple of parameters such as hello, hello. Hello, -y. hello. Maybe a bit of world. No, actually, hello, foo for a change. The world is too easy. Uh, that is just nothing. Then just have a OK, and then another no path done. So that is evaluating, and just say, oh, there we go. We just uh, have this tag now in this variable. Now I'm just going to uh, ask for this one to show the alert. Alert dot show, uh, because we were using Roslyn, um, we have all the intelligence goodie built in. And, and that is cool because, oh yeah, nice. That just worked out of the box, works uh, also with Android. Uh, just another one quickly, something that is just um, um, var map equal new, uh, what that called already, uh, yeah, map, map git, map git dot uh, map view, map view. Uh, so the MP my view, yes, uh, up, 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 and we want quite UI screen dot main screen dot bounce, yes, up, and then we go to key window, which is just like your window hook, uh, root view controller, root, no, no, to root, root view controller dot uh, view dot sub view. So you're literally uh, na navigating your, your hierarchy. Dot add, 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 can I have add? Hello, hello. So views dot add, why not add? Uh, view dot, ah, here we go now. Add sub views, yeah. And we, you, we uh, literally I just created a map and I'm going to add it to, uh, to it. Map, map, here we go. Not happy with that, maybe like this. And 
sub view. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, okay. Ah, yes, yes, it's there already. There we go. Um, hello, Singapore. All right. That's all for me today, I believe, um, because that's why I'm going to take all the time, and I don't want to do that. Uh, if you want some questions, maybe let's do that after the other speakers, if I've got some time. Thank you very much for that.